because of that. I'm not saying that I'm enlightened, but the set because I'm not, or anything close as, uh, from the idea or the concept that I used to have of it. But there's a freedom in the realization. So talk about the freedom. It's kind of a little bit what I spoke about earlier about freedom from any particular state. Freedom to be exactly who I am, or where I am, as I am. And not saying that being caught in hooked is any worse than being in a realized state. Because it's the, the being there for it, in a way, that, uh, that matters at this point. The consciousness being there. So, it's the Ridwan School Dharma approach, whatever we call it, is very interesting because you've got really, um, you're working on a personality level much of the time, but it includes, especially in the latter stages of being in the school, it includes the spiritual dimensions, the higher dimensions, namely su supreme, etc. Yeah. And there's a uniqueness about that, and there's also a kind of involves a pro from my understanding it involves a process but that process is not limited for something to happen where you are you might find the process is maybe almost beyond where you are and you might also find that something is happening well above where the process is seems to be seems to be happening at exactly i think it's true and part of the diamond approach it has a whole logos, so it's a stream of unfoldment that I th my sense is that when one plugs into that stream of unfoldment, one is being affected in many, many ways, and many of which are not possibly probably conscious. And um, working on the psychological dimension of the ego is never, we never teach or talk about that alone. It's always in relationship to a, a corresponding aspect of true nature. So we work on the ego, but there's, I can't think of a time when there's not a corresponding aspect of true nature that it's being, that the ego is reflecting. And somehow being awakened, being coming being alive awakened. again. By, it's like if we see the personality and what it's doing, by the very fact of seeing it, it thins. It less, has less density. Yeah. And the aspect which is being taught, the, the part of true nature that that ego is reflecting in that moment, the teachers are generally in some way manifesting. It filters through and something very uh, al alchemical happens that uh, allows the personality to unravel and the deeper dimensions of our nature to kind of percolate up. This thing that the... Um the personality is a reflection of who we really are somehow. Right. So, you know, talking about this earlier with Sandra, it does contain the clues to something that is more tangible. It absolutely. The, if you think about it from the perspective of the non dual, it has to. It has to be the gateway, it has to lead ultimately to reality. It can't stand alone as this isolated, disconnected thing. It just uh, wouldn't make sense. So to broaden it even more, how are we doing with the planet at the moment? It doesn't seem to be doing, we don't seem to be doing too well in terms of our uh, <laughs> intelligent using of resources. And I just, I'm just wondering how that fits into the bigger picture in terms of personal development. Well, that is the big question. Um, I mean, again, 
to use the, the concept of non-duality, I mean, if we do recognize that we're all one thing, that everything, I don't mean just humans are one thing, but everything is one thing, one presence, one manifestation, then the more people that recognize that, the better. Because you never really want to hurt another part of yourself. But I think we've got a huge challenge ahead. And I don't think the spiritual recognition and realization is going to be enough on its own. It's as if, for me, the way I look at it, maybe in simplistic terms, but somehow it translates in, in, in my world anyway, it's like our personalities become more gross somehow, more, more grand, and our, our living on the outside becomes more and more grand. We get more and more material things, and you know, can, people complain about their lives, but most people are far, far better off than they were the equivalent 50 years ago or even 30 years ago. Yet people are still not happy, and we're running out of resources on the planet, and somehow the whole thing doesn't work. And uh, the only clue we've got is somehow to go within, see what's real for us, what do we really need. And uh, it's almost as if the personalities are getting out of control. Yeah, I mean, one of the things you're seeing, at least in the States, um, where I live now, is that this whole recession thing that's going on, this global recession, is uh, it's beginning to make people take a little stock and look at some of their values. But the fundamental root of the dis, uh, dissatisfaction is not being touched, and I'm sure once the economy turns around, it'll pretty much be business as usual, unless people really start to get curious about themselves. And how is that for you? Because for me, I find it, the more I learn about how I am and how other people are and how I perceive the bigger picture to be, I kind of, I wonder at the kind of thinking of most, of most people, not in a judgmental way necessarily, but just what becomes more and more obvious to me just becomes more and more... There's a new film out called Age of Stupid, so I can use that word, I can quote from the film, Age, I saw it two weeks ago, Age of Stupid, which is very much about what we're doing with the planetary resources, how we're running out, we're not sustainable anymore, and it is, we're being stupid, and I don't completely exclude myself from this. It is the Age of Stupid. We're destroying our foundation, and, uh, and I just wonder how that relates to within, somehow, we ultimately destroy our foundation within as well. I guess, I guess on one level you can't destroy it, but we cover it up so much. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with a huge, huge question here. I mean, from one angle, from a sort of transcendent perspective, you know, the, the earth will be fine. The humans might not survive. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but from an integrative perspective, yeah. for, for realization to really land, we've got to address this. We've got to address yeah. it individually, we've got to address it globally. Um, for me, it's still uh, something that's a challenge. I don't understand, actually, uh, really how to go about it. And it's not something, to be honest with you, that I've put a huge amount of focus on. And that in that, I'm as guilty as the next person of falling asleep in that area, to use a spiritual term. Um, and waking up is hard. It's challenging. Some things, you know, I don't really want to wake up to. Yeah. But I, the more conscious I become of the fact that I don't want to wake up to them, it's hard to stay there for very long. 